How did Switzerland, which has only mountains, become a rich country? On August 10, 1792, angry people came to the Tuileries Palace in Paris. It's in the middle of the French Revolution. Louis XVI and Queen Marie Antoinette were staying in this palace. Frightened by the huge crowd numbers, the king's guards began to flee. But only one unit fought desperately against the crowd. As there were a series of casualties on both sides, French civic forces recommended, we will open the way back, so go back to your country. But they didn't do anything on the spot. Because of that, the king and queen were able to escape the palace. But soon this unit was wiped out. There were 786 Swiss mercenaries in total. They obviously had a chance to live. And yet, why did they fight such a reckless fight? It wasn't loyalty to the French king. It was just because their country was so poor. Later, a suicide note was found in a dead soldier among Swiss mercenaries. The suicide note said that if a Swiss mercenary renounces his promise to the king and runs away, no one in Switzerland will work as a mercenary after that. Simply put, if they lose trust, they'll lose everything. Switzerland is a country in the Alps. 70% of the country is distracted. If you add up the lake in Switzerland, it's 75%. There is only 25% of the arable land available for farming. Even that is hard to farm because of the cold. So, for a long time Switzerland has always been known as the poorest country in Europe. In Switzerland, the first son could inherit even a small piece of land. But other than that, the brothers had to go abroad to make ends meet. That was the mercenary business. Switzerland was poor, but the bravery of soldiers was famous for a long time. Most of them lived in rugged mountainous areas, so they had excellent lung capacity and good stamina. In addition, they had a lot of hands-on experience fighting the Habsburgs on the border. The Swiss mercenaries were very expensive. And yet all the kings looked for them when they were in a hurry. There were always Swiss mercenaries behind most of Europe's wars, including the Hundred Years' War, the Burgundy War, the Spanish-Poland-Austrian Succession War, and the Napoleonic Wars. Then the Vatican, where the Pope is located, has been left to Swiss mercenaries since hundreds of years ago. Why? Because they never betray their employers. They weren't afraid to die in order to keep the contract, as we saw in the case of Louis XVI during the French Revolution. The reason why we talk about mercenaries this long is because there are two keywords in it that made Switzerland live well. The two are, trustworthy, and expensive. I'll talk about this later. Another important keyword for Switzerland to become a rich country is, neutral. If you look at the map, Switzerland is a transportation hub in the center of Europe. There are many great powers such as France, Germany, Austria, Italy, etc. Switzerland was often turned into a battlefield by them. Because of this, Switzerland has long pushed for neutrality to survive, and it did not gain international recognition until the early 19th century. This completely ended the mercenary industry, which was forced to engage in conflicts in other countries. I'll tell you again later how this neutral status made Switzerland rich. Now we're going to focus on industry and see how Switzerland became the richest country in the world. In the late 16th century, France had the Huguenot War. It's a religious war between the old church and the new church. Many Huguenots, or Protestants, migrated to Switzerland to escape persecution. Because in Switzerland, the Protestant religion was already established by Calvin and Zwingli's Reformation. Among the Protestants who came over at this time, there were especially many watchmen with the best technology of the time. In Switzerland at this time, precision handicrafts such as jewelry were developed. Due to the religious reform atmosphere, which emphasized frugal life, most of them changed their business to the watch business. They learned the art of making watches from Protestant artisans, and when the precision unique to the craftsmen was added to it, high-quality watches began to pour out. Switzerland is a country with a very small population, so trade was the only way to live. In this respect, the watch was a perfect fit for Switzerland in many ways. It was difficult to sell bulky or heavy products to foreign countries because it was a country with many narrow and rough mountain paths. But the watch was small and light. And the added value was enormous. In Switzerland, merchants packed large bags with watches and went over the Alps to France, Germany, Italy, and the Netherlands to sell them. For the first time in history, besides the mercenary industry, an industry where many people could live was born. This led to over 20,000 people working in the watch industry in Geneva in the second half of the 18th century, 
producing 85,000 watches per year. This is how Switzerland, the country of watches that sweep the world with ultra-high-priced luxury watches, was created. At the beginning of the video, the Swiss mercenaries were very expensive, and yet all the kings said they had found them. That's what the Swiss watch did. Swiss watches were expensive, and yet many people wanted them because of their high quality. And this standard continues to this day. Their motto is, we only sell expensive products with high added value. Another example of this is a Swiss pharmaceutical company. The pharmaceutical business in Switzerland started with dyeing. It was a simple thing to color the cloth with different plants from the Alps. Then the Swiss gradually realized that there were so many rare herbs at the foot of the Alps. After repeated research, they turned herbs into pills. And they put it in their bags and sold it all over Europe over the Alps. The herbs were lighter than watches, and the added value was high, so a bag alone could benefit a lot. As the pharmaceutical industry continues to develop, Switzerland today has world-class pharmaceutical companies such as Novartis, the world's number one new drug company, and Roche, the world's number one anti-cancer drug. The watch and textile industries are the reasons that changed Switzerland from a poor agricultural society to an industrial society. With the introduction of British textiles in the late 18th century, Switzerland began a full-fledged textile industry. But then Napoleon's blockade of the continent made it impossible to bring in any more machines, and for a while it was a crisis. But Switzerland turned this into an opportunity. Switzerland began to build its own spinning machines, and it was the first time that a diesel engine was attached to the spinning machine to enable mass production. Because of this, Switzerland's textile industry was the best in the world at the time. Swiss textile machines were also starting to sell a lot. By 1900, 50% of the population was working in the textile industry. However, Swiss mercenaries played a big role in the development of the textile industry. Mercenaries who have been dispatched to many European countries were well aware of the market conditions of many countries. And there were a lot of foreign connections that trusted Swiss mercenaries, so they could easily sell things. Switzerland's geographical location was a great danger when it was a small country. But for Switzerland, which opened its eyes to trade, its geographical location was a big advantage. Switzerland focused on road construction in the early 19th century to increase trade with countries beyond the Alps, and in the mid-19th century, it increased railroad construction a lot. This created another industry opportunity that Switzerland had never expected. Even today, tourism is a big part of the Swiss economy. At this time, the wealthy in Europe were able to travel abroad. By the end of the 19th century, 350,000 tourists had visited Switzerland and enjoyed the beauty of the Alps. As capital accumulated in the watch industry, textile industry, tourism industry, and pharmaceutical industry, Switzerland developed its financial industry. And because of the success of the banking business, Switzerland, which was a weak country, was transformed into a rich country that received global attention. The financial industry in Switzerland also began with the immigration of Protestants from France. In the late 17th century, Louis XVI withdrew the decree of Nantes, which allowed freedom of Protestantism, resulting in the Second Exodus. Among the Protestants who came to Switzerland, there were many newly rich people. They did finance mainly in Geneva. But unfortunately, Louis XVI, who was in luxury, asked them for help and asked for one condition. It was asking them to keep it a secret that they had borrowed the money. He was embarrassed that he was helped by the people he kicked out. The Swiss bank is famous for its depositors and for its secrecy that does not ask or question the source of money. This was created by Louis XVI. This is how Switzerland's financial industry began to rise to a global level through World War I and II. This was possible because Switzerland was in a neutral position and there was a belief that Switzerland would keep their money to the end. After the war, the rich found a safe country. Switzerland was the only safe country in Europe. So there was a huge influx of money into the Swiss bank. And European money was unbelievable, not German or British money. Because as soon as they lose the war, the country's money will be a piece of waste paper. The Arab world, which supplied the essential oil for the war, also demanded Swiss francs as a means of payment. Money from four countries, which was frequently invaded in the center of Europe and had no way to live except in the mercenary industry, became the key currency. But did the wealthy in Europe survive both World War I and World War II when they left their money in Swiss banks? That's not true. The money of the rich in Germany, which Gestapo, 
the Nazi secret police officer, was eager to find, was also owned by the Swiss bank. So did the Jewish money, which is rumored to have a lot of cash. All of the Jewish money that died after leaving it in the Swiss bank became owned by the Swiss bank. Later, under pressure from the United States, they gave some compensation for the damage to their damages. The Swiss financial industry has lifted the Swiss economy to the skies. And when the security of Switzerland, which has a low risk of war, was recognized through World War II, many international organizations moved to Switzerland. WTO, International Red Cross More than 30 major international organizations, including Red Cross, the International Health Organization's WHO, the International Labor Organization's ILO, and the International Settlement Bank's BIS, and more than 250 NGOs have settled in Switzerland. They still provide good jobs for the Swiss people. And the International Olympic Committee and the International Football Federation are also located in Switzerland. Also, more than 5,000 multinationals, including Google's Overseas Technology Center, are located in Switzerland, making Switzerland rich. At the root of the Swiss being able to get this rich was the trust that the Swiss mercenaries gained. And because they were able to avoid war for many years as they became completely neutral, they were able to accumulate wealth continuously. If you look at the Swiss industry trend, there is another consistency. The population of Switzerland is still about 8.7 million today. The territory is also very small compared to other countries. It is practically impossible for this small country to develop industries in all fields. So Switzerland has been all into a particular industry. The watch, pharmaceutical, textile, tourism, and financial industries that I mentioned earlier all did. It's what Switzerland has repeated for hundreds of years now to focus all its capabilities on raising the level of a particular industry to the highest level and then selling goods at the highest possible price. So what industry is Switzerland currently focusing on? It doesn't seem to fit in with the great natural scenery of the Alps, but it's the high-tech industry. Switzerland, in a word, is a country of engineers. The majority of vocational schools that most students go to, and universities where 15% of students go to, are in science and engineering. And they combine electronics with precision technology from watches to create cutting-edge, high-tech products such as medical devices, ship turbines, power generation facilities, precision meters, and spacecraft. And of course these products are incredibly expensive, and yet they're selling incredibly well. They're only selling high-value added products, as they've always been. And so they made the country that they used to live on as mercenaries the richest country in the world today, with a per capita income of $82,000. That's it for today. Did you enjoy the video? If it was fun or not, please subscribe and like. Have a great day today.